Howdy folks, while well, cleaning out the junk drawer today I found some old mechanical tail gyros and I figured this is a good time to actually pay homage to our, uh, to our lowly gyros on our helicopters. Uh, kind of talk about where they started, where they have gone, uh, how they work, and then I, I kind of want to open up an old mechanical one so you can actually see how it works because it's, it's pretty interesting. It's easy to see, it's easy to grasp the concept. These use a spinning weight in them that's spinning really quick and that's what's acting as your gyroscope. It is a gyroscope and it resists um, changes to movement and that's what detects the uh, movement on those and how it corrects for them. On these new ones, uh, these are often called MEMS gyros, uh, which stands for Micro Electro Mechanical System. Um, in, these are also, uh, the way they work is they use a vibrating structure gyroscope. It's a micro, uh, microscopic even, um, vibrating crystal or piezoelectric element uh, that's vibrating really fast in a plane. And the same way a spinning mass resists change to movement, uh, a vibrating mass will also resist change to movement. And as these move, uh, and as that resistance is encountered, it can be detected. And that's how the sensor, gyro sensors in these little guys work. As a comparison, you know, here's, here's an old mechanical gyro. Uh, this whole uh, system, this, this weighs the most, this is about 70 grams, but the whole thing weighs about 100 grams, whereas, you know, today's newer uh, vibrating structure gyroscopes, or MEMS gyroscopes, you know, they weigh about 10 grams to 15. You know, essentially one tenth the weight. These have got um, you know heading lock technology. These were just yaw rate. So what I'm going to do is I'll hook this up so you can see how it works. We'll hook a servo up to it and we'll rotate it, and then we'll take the case off so you can actually see what's going on inside. It's pretty cool. So for anyone who's interested, uh, this particular mechanical gyro is a Futaba. FP G154 is a pretty common one in the day. Um, this one you didn't have the option to set the gain remotely from the radio. Uh, there's a potentiometer to set the gain and then a directional switch to change which direction the gyro corrects in. So unlike today's uh, uh, modern gyros that you know they've got programming in them where you select all that either through a menu or through uh, you know little LED flash sequences on the gyro this is all done with mechanical switches. Uh, Futaba also had a little higher end one called the FPG135 and this one did have remote gain. Um, so more complicated unit, a little heavier. I think this one weighs about 110, 120 grams total weight. But uh, I just wanted to show this one because we don't have to have a remote gain set up. And main thing I want to show you is the connectivity, how these are connected and how these mechanical sensors work because you can actually see it. So this connected pretty much the same way as a modern gyro does. You've got uh, one output going to your actual tail servo and the other output is your RX in from your uh, receiver. So you've also got control, you know, this would be your tail stick or rudder stick. So you've got control over the servo that way, or when the servo detects, or sorry, when the gyro detects movement. You know, let's move this servo over here. Hopefully it will be in frame while I'll show you this. Come on, focus. So all this little sensor is, is it's a little DC motor in there with two heavy brass weights on it. Uh, they're not turned on now. And it pivots on a little ball bearing, so this whole thing is allowed to pivot back and forth. And there's a little Hall effect sensor at the bottom, so a little magnet and a Hall effect pickup. So as this moves off center, it imparts movement to the servo. And that's as simple as it was. So the other part of these mechanical gyros, they generally add an on and off switch because they use quite a bit of current when they're turned on. You'll probably hear this thing spool up when I turn it on. You won't really see it. You know, unless what we could do is put some marks on the wheels. And I'll just put a mark so you can see when I turn this on how that spins up. It's 
pretty quiet. But as you can see, as I turn it, those spitting masses are resisting the movement and causing that whole assembly to pivot. And then that's being picked up by the hall sensor, which is moving the little servo there. Let me just zoom in here a bit. There you can hear it better when it's on the mat. So that's uh, all there is to a mechanical or er, mechanical gyro. Uh, way heavier than what we were used to now, but this is what uh, got the hobby off. Uh, again, without the tail gyro, I don't think uh, most people would be flying a radio patrol helicopter. So we should really pay homage to these little guys because it's what's made the uh, hobby accessible for most. Cheers, folks.